Hi everyone, it's Rick here from the Game Creators, and uh, this week I've moved my game on a bit further. So let's just uh, run the game, and I'll show you what's new. So yeah, we've got the main menu. Click start. The ball coming down, but now the ball goes into the little buckets, and it's detected and gets reset. Also, each time the ball's generated. Uh, a higher velocity is created so the balls come down faster as you can see just an arbitrary 250 every time the balls reset so it becomes really fast really quickly so let's have a look at what I'm doing in the code and also in the scenes to make these changes from last time if we first go to the scenes you can see that we've got these extra little objects at the bottom of the buckets. Now those are used to detect whether the ball has gone into these buckets. Um, that's part of the solution. Uh, I've also created a sort of physics line, a little uh, U-shape on each of these so that the ball can't come in from an angle, it has to go in the top. Also these are hidden at the start, so although you can see them in the editor, when the code starts they're, they're not visible. I think I do that from code actually. So let's have a look at the main .agc file. What's new? So I'm using set physics scale. By changing the scale to this setting, the velocity I give the ball when it's reset at the top will ensure that it's faster each time. The default scale doesn't do that. So that's a good tip to know. Another addition is set physics wall bottom to zero. By default, if we um, go back to the scene, there will be a barrier around all the sides so the ball would just settle here if it gets into this area here. By removing this barrier, the ball can fall out of the play area and we can detect that and reset the, the ball back to the top. So that's the purpose of that line in the code. I can also show you that by turning this line on. Set physics debug on. When this command is on, you'll be able to see the physics barriers that I've created. Let's just run the game and it'll make sense. So you can see all the physics objects have now got a little outline to show where the physics are working to. The ball has one round it. This rotating bat has one. And these detector sprites have them as well. There's a thin green line that goes down and up and another one here. And that ensures that the ball has to go into the top. So we just tilt this. You see it's colliding. There you are. That one hit right on the top there. So you can see how that's working. So it's useful to use that because sometimes when you're setting up physics objects you want to see what you've done in a visual way and that's a great command to use. So let's just run that out again. We don't need that now. In the ball check section of the code, if you remember last time we had a Y check to see if the ball was at the bottom of the screen, slightly change that to if Y is greater than 1920, then go sub reset ball, and that's the end of that check. But we're also doing these two checks. We're doing a get physics collision between the game ball and game collision left, which if we have a look at the scene, is this object here, game collision left, and obviously the one over here is game collision right. Back to the code. We do a check with get physics collision between game ball and game collision left. Hit is the result. If hit equals one, then there must have been a collision between those two. So the ball must be in the left bucket. Then we reset the ball, and that's the end of that one. Again, we do a check on the right one between the ball and the right cup, 
and if it's one then we reset the ball. So three checks to see where the ball is in the game and if those any of those are true then it comes to this routine which basically just resets the Y of the ball to 50 which is higher up in the screen and then give it a random X position and then we add 250 to the force and then we set the sprite physics velocity of the ball to force. If we have a look at that command um, set sprite physics velocity the sprite number and the VX and the VY so the velocity of X and velocity of Y well obviously we want the the Y to go down faster than before and that's why we have force in the Y we don't want to add any X velocity we don't want the ball to go left and right we could if we just try it here let's move it to say give it a 200 a positive force it will arc to the right so let's just try that you can see it's moved when it's created it goes to the right like that so that's what reset ball does this next part of the code this is what creates the physics barriers for the two cups so if we look at um, game left cup go back to the scene this object here okay so we wanted to draw a barrier that went down across and up and we're using a command called set sprite shape chain there's some details here and the help about it but essentially you're saying create a chain for this sprite a physics chain if you like there's going to be four items in this chain that's what the first number indicates number of points so you've got the, the first one the second the third and the fourth if you know what I mean and this is the index so this is zero it starts at zero so the first index is and we keep this at one to zero because this is a looping variable so we can ignore that one so on the first point we're saying um, again if we go back to the scene the all sprites have their origin in the middle by default so we want to come across on the X and up in the Y and that's a minus and a minus from the zero zero point so we go minus 125 in the X and then up minus 100 so the next point number one is again keeping the uh, the X to minus 125 but going down 100 from the origin so uh, minus 125 is there on the X but we're we're going from zero in the what if you imagine zero zero is there we've got minus 125 here plus 100 there and this is what these values are meaning so then the X becomes 125 and the Y is positive and then the X stays 125 and the Y is minus 100 so the final points up here if we just um, and we do the same for the right cup as well uh, and at the very end of setting up the chain we set sprite physics on for that object otherwise it wouldn't have physics and the chain wouldn't work um, let's turn back on set physics debug and if we change one of these values let's say the last point was changed to 200 then what's going to happen is the line's going to extend to about here maybe about there actually so let's run that yeah there you go see that line's even higher and let's try and make it a bit bigger see it's much higher now and it's going to get stuck so you can see how that works so that's what the set sprite shape chain set of commands do let's reset that back to what it was as we had it there we go and obviously we'll turn off the debug physics when we finish the game so that's as much as I've done this week um, next time I plan to randomize the color of the ball so it'll be red or green and then you've got a position and you've got to put them into the right buckets I might also change 
how the seesaw works. I might have more than one seesaw, so I can easily put a seesaw anywhere in the game. All right, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the progress so far, and I look forward to showing you in the next version. Bye-bye for now.